Example 4.3 Part B. Determine which lease option should be selected on the basis of a present worth comparison using the LCM. Okay, so now we're going to solve the same problem, but we're going to be focusing on the LCM method. So as you can see, we have two different lives. We have a 6 and a 9. The LCM for this will be equal to 18 years. Okay, so how is that going to work? It, it's not the same as the study period where you either shrink or extend uh, your diagram. In this case, you're going to see how many of the... This is one cycle. So you have location A, it's six years, and location B would be nine. How many times or how many cycles can you fit location A into 18 years? So let's draw the diagram for this. Okay, so well, first of all, let me put location A. Okay, so in this case we have 6 and we want to fit 6 into 18. It means that we can fit a 6 into 18 three times. So we're going to draw three cycles for location A. We draw the, in the 18 years. It's going to be a longer diagram. Uh, so, okay, so you have your year zero. I'm going to go, I'm going to put here year six, 12, and 18. Okay, because it will be repeating every six years. So here you would have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. Let's focus on the first cycle only for now. Okay, so we have 15,000 going down. We have an annual lease cost of 3,500. So we're just drawing the first uh, the diagram that says if you only had six years. Right? So it's up to here. And then we have the deposit return of $1,000 occurring in year six. $1,000. Oh, and here it was minus $3,500. Okay? This would be cycle one. When cycle one ends it's going to be the beginning of cycle number two okay so you have to start all over again so it's assuming that this is year zero again you have your p going down right you have your cash flows for the a's up to year 12 or year six of the second cycle and then you have another f another deposit return at the end of the second cycle then again the second cycle ends and we're gonna restart another cycle so it's again our year zero of the third cycle so we need to add again our minus 15 all of the annuals and then at the end we need another $1,000 return. Okay, one way to know if you're doing this right, oh, and notice that you don't put the 15000 again, okay, because you are not starting another cycle. So one way to know that you're doing this right or that you're in the right track is that if you have three cycles, that means that you must have the first cost appearing three times in your diagram and you must also have noted the deposit return three times in your diagram. The A will be uniform, so basically you're going to have the same A all over the diagram. Okay, so now we need to convert everything, or to say we need to move everything to year zero so that we can find the present worth of A. 
Okay, so now, how are we going to do this? So we know that this is our P. Okay, because it's already in year zero. This will be our A because it occurs every year for the three cycles. But then these right here, this minus 15,000 and this minus 15,000 over here, even though they're noted as P's in the diagram are not going to be P because they are not in year zero of the diagram. So you have to look at the big picture here. If you want to move these to year zero, then these are going to be F's. And same thing for these. It's going to be an F, an F, and another F. Okay, so now we can start putting our equation together. So we have the present worth of A. Let's go step by step. And if you want to make it less confusing when setting up, because you're going to have a lot of values put together, just start in order. So I'm going to focus first on the minus 15,000, because remember we need to have three of them, so we're going to focus on the first cost only. Okay, so the very first one, uh, this one right here, it's going to be minus 15,000, easy because it's already in year zero, so no factor needed. This one right here, again, minus 15,000, but this one we have to move it, so it's going to be find P, given F at 15%, and how many years do I need to move it? One, two, three, four, five, six years. So we're done with the second one. Now the third one. Minus 15,000. We also need to move it. Find P given F at 15. And this one is 12 years away from year zero. Okay. So we're done with these three. Now let's do our uh, one thousands. Okay, these are all positive. I'm going to put them below. It's going to be plus 1,000. I need to move this one. So it's going to be find P given F 15% six years plus this one right here 1,000 find P given F 15% it's 12 years away. And then we have the last one plus 1,000, find P, given F, 15%, and this one is 18 years away. And then, don't forget the A, but we only have one of those, so it's because uh, it's annual, so it repeats every year. So we just add, well, in this case, subtract, because it's negative, the 3,500, and we're going to convert it by finding P, given A, 15% and how many A's do we have in total? We have 18. So I'm just going to point out that you will be using different N's depending on how many years you need to move it so that it gets to year zero. Okay. Uh, also, another thing that you could have done is, for example, you could have gotten the net value here saying that, and you could do it all in one step, so it would be minus 15, minus 3,500, plus 100, I mean 1,000, sorry. So it's minus 15,000, minus 3,500, plus 1,000. So you combine all three, and then you move it with uh, the find P given F factor for six years. You could have done that as well, same here, and same here. But for now, I would recommend that you do it step by step, and it's easier because this way you will know if you're missing anything. You need to have three of these, three of these, and only one of this, but for all years. Okay, so after you go to the factor tables and uh, calculate the results, you would get minus forty-five thousand and thirty-six dollars. Okay, so we have the first one. Now, let's look at the second one. We need all, now we need location B, and our diagram is going to look different. 
And so we have location B. For location B, uh, we have nine years and we want to fit the nine years into 18. So how many cycles are we going to have here? We're going to have two. So it's only going to be repeated twice. So then again, we need to draw all 18 years. Uh, so it's going to be from zero. This would be year nine. And this would be year 18. Okay, so here you would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Oh, and we said that it's two cycles here. Okay, so we start by um, drawing our first cost, which in this case is minus 18. So remember that we're going to need to put that one twice. One occurs in year zero, and the other one occurs in year zero of the second cycle, which in this case will be year nine. So we're going to put one right here, and another one right there. So you're going to have minus 18k, minus 18k. Uh, then let's go with the annual lease cost. That's a given. We know that it's annual, so therefore minus 3,100, you're going to put it every single year, starting in year one. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't forget to put it here. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, all 18 years. And then we need the deposit return, which occurs in year nine at the end of the first cycle, but it's also supposed to occur at the end of the second cycle. So that means it's gonna be in year nine and year 18. So you have another cash flow here and another cash flow there. So this is your 2000 and 2000. Uh, oh, and I forgot to put the minus 3,100 for the A's. Okay, so now that you have it here, uh, we need to find the present worth of location B. Okay, just like here. So again, this is going to be your P because it's in year zero. This is your A because it happens every year. And all of the rest are going to be F's. Okay, to confirm that we're doing this right, we have two cycles, so we have the initial cost twice and we have the deposit return twice as well. Okay, so now we can start setting up our equation. We have the present worth of B. Let's start in order. Minus 18K, we're done with the first one. Now let's move this one. Minus 18K, find P given F at 15% nine years away. Uh, we have these two. Now let's go with the deposit returns. We also need two of those. So it's 2000, find P given F 15% nine. Then the second one plus 2000 Find P given F 15%, this one's 18 uh, years away. And then uh, don't forget to subtract the A's, I'm going to put them below, minus 3,100. Find P given A 15% and we said that we have 18 of those. Okay, so then again just to... Uh, Pay attention to the ends that you're using for each and one of the movements. Okay, so you go to the tables, find the values, plug them in, and you will be getting a total of minus 41,384 dollars.
Okay, so this would be the present worth of location uh, B. Then again, we need to select one, the best one, and here you have uh, both negative results, so you would go with the numerical largest one, or the least negative one, which in this case would be alternative B. So select location B. Here we can see the results obtained from using both methods. The study period shows that location A is the best option while the LCM points to location B. The results will vary according to the number of years over which the alternatives are being evaluated, meaning that location A is the best choice in the short term because we only used five years and location B is economically better in the long run because we used 18 years for this. In this case, since the lease terms are relatively short, so we have six and nine years, then the study period of five years would be a better fit. Since 19 years used in part B are a very long time compared to the lease terms post. So you must evaluate the alternatives objectively. So not just because you really like location B, then you will be presenting your supervisor with the analysis where the location B is the best option. Here we can see the results obtained from using both methods. The study period shows that location A is the best option here, while the LCM points to location B. So you must know that the results will vary according to the number of years over which the alternatives are being evaluated, meaning that location A is the best choice in the short term because we only evaluated it for five years, and location B would be economically better in the long run because we used 18 years for the evaluation. So in this case, since the lease terms, we can say that they're relatively short, okay, so we have six and nine years, then we can say that using the study period of five years, this one right here, would be a better fit for your analysis, okay, because 19 years is a very long time compared to the years, uh, the lease term in years given for each and one of the locations. Okay, so you must evaluate the alternatives objectively. So not just because you really, really like location B, then you're just going to go to your boss and present him or her with the results that point out that location B is the best location.